Hello, I'm Grim Grindle, and welcome to a builder's guide to nuts and bolts. The last time that we did a tutorial in Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts on Turrets, the tutorial was titled Simple Turrets. And as you might imagine, and as some of you have in fact guessed, this implies that there is an advanced turrets. In fact, it's not really implicit because I'm actually fairly sure I've mentioned that there were more complex turrets in the first video. And that's exactly what we're going to have a look at here. Welcome to your guide to advanced turrets. The main difference between the two turrets is that the simple turret was made up of two pieces joined together with two tow bars, whereas the advanced turret is made up of three pieces. And that one extra piece largely increases the functionality of the advanced turret. You see the one joint on the simple turret allows you to aim the turret on the X axis, but the secondary joint on the advanced turret allows you to aim it on the Y axis. So in layman's terms, the advanced turret allows you to aim left, right, up and down rather than just left and right. And before I get started, I want to clarify that I'm not the inventor of the design of the advanced turrets. I am the designer of the turret I am going to show you how to use, but the actual functionality was discovered by another user that is now lost to time. The first ever advanced turret, as far as I'm aware, was called the Destroyer of Moons, and it was designed for and used in a competition on the forum to see who could get the highest points using the turret on the challenge save our statue. Unfortunately, what with the forum being gone, it's impossible to look up who made it and properly give them credit. As I'm not the creator of the Destroy All Moons turret, I'm not going to give out the design. Although I am a curious little so-and-so, and because I thought the Destroyer of Moons turret was so interesting, after I received a copy of it way back in the day, I immediately examined it carefully, figured out how it worked, and built my own version of it. And since my own version of it is in fact entirely my own design, I won't lose any sleep telling you how to make it. So I'd like to introduce to you the Blaster of Asteroids, an example vehicle I've built for the express purpose of explaining the workings of advanced turrets. There are most certainly improvements you can make to the vehicle to improve its functionality, and of course, aesthetically, it has a long way to go. But as far as simplicity goes, this is about as stripped down as you can possibly make an advanced turret before it actually starts to lose its core functionality. And as you can see by the paint job, I've coloured separately the three different segments so you can better differentiate them. So, while we're on the subject of the three different segments, let's break them down and look at them individually. Firstly, the red part, which due to its functionality as the base, I'm going to refer to as the base. We're getting really technical now. The base itself consists of three separate layers. The very bottom layer is very simple and is only really there to give weight to the vehicle so it doesn't topple over. In the dead center of it is a single super block, and then coming off of all four sides of this super block are lines of three super blocks connected, each with a sinker on the end of them. And then on the next layer up of the basement segments, the first part of the functionality really starts to take fold. Firstly, you want a tow bar facing upwards connected to the block in the dead center of the previous layer. And then built on each four sides of that tow bar, you want four wheels upside down, so the wheels are facing upwards, arranged horizontally to the expanding lines below. It's sort of hard to explain, just do what I did on the screen. Importantly, each of these four wheels must be set to freewheeling, which you can do by selecting them individually, hitting the right bumper, and then going down to freewheeling. And then flanking those wheels on all sides, you want eight super blocks. And then moving on to the third and final layer of the first segment, you want to have four bumpers facing upwards, arranged in a way that forms sort of a square with the wheels. And then surrounding this wheel and bumper square, you sort of want to have a circle consisting of wedge and panel blocks. Now that this bottom segment is fully assembled, you can start to see what its actual functionality is. It is not only a heavy segment meant to anchor the entire vehicle down, but it also has the rather important function of allowing whatever is placed on the square of bumpers and wheels to rotate easily. It is, as I said, important for these wheels to be set to freewheeling because they're not actually doing anything under their own power. They're simply allowing the thing on top of it to turn itself. It's sort of a bit of a conveyor belt setup. Now moving on to the second segment, which is the blue segment, which functions sort of as the stem of the turret. Firstly, you want to place a tow bar facing downwards in position to connect with the previous tow bar facing upwards. That means that this part, though actually connected to the second segment, is actually in line with the third layer of the first segment. So essentially, it's on the same layer as the bumpers, and it's in between the four wheels of the wheels. And then on the next layer up, you want four heavy blocks and four wedges positioned so that the four heavy blocks are over top of the wheels of the wheels and the four wedges are over top of the bumpers positioned in a way to create a circle with the blocks. And in the dead center of the four blocks, you want to place a super fuel which will connect it with the bumper on the lower layer. And then on the next layer up again, you want to place two super engines on top of two of the heavy blocks 
with each super engine having two small propellers attached to them facing in opposite directions. Now, just as you selected and set the wheels to be freewheeling, you want to select each propeller and make sure that each engine has one propeller that's pushing and one propeller that's pulling. If you're not sure that you've done it correctly, you want to look closely and make sure that the propellers on each engine have the arrows pointing the same way, and that the arrows on the propellers on the opposite engine are also pointing the same way, but in reverse. This setup is of paramount importance because it allows you to rotate the second segment using your left and right trigger. And then connected to the super fuel in the middle is the stem that goes upwards consisting of two panel blocks, a super block, and a T block with two tow bars connected to it facing outwards. And now that we've looked at the entirety of the blue segment, let's move on to the final segment, the yellow segment. This third segment is the segment in which your seat will be attached and basically entirely revolves around a middle axle sort of setup. So firstly, you want to place two tow bars facing inwards so that they will connect with the second segment's two tow bars that are facing outwards. You then want to place a rectangle of blocks surrounding these tow bars while making sure to still give the tow bars a little bit of space on either side. As you can see, I've chosen to do mine as 7 blocks by 5 blocks with Banjo seat being in the dead center of the front row and some of the blocks in the back row being heavy blocks rather than super blocks. This is because the entire functionality of the top segment works as a hinge with you manipulating its orientation by simply using the left thumbstick. This means that the entire functionality of the top segment is very heavily dependent on gravity, and therefore it has to be very carefully balanced. And since most turrets have their cannons on the front, you need the back to be equally heavy to achieve balance. Since I like big scary cannons on the front, I've also added these extra 7 heavy wedges to the back and arranged them like so. And then finally you want to attach the actual pew pew shooter part of your turret to the front of it. I've done mine as two rows of four egg guns with the top egg guns connected to the vehicle via four super poles connected to a super wedge and the bottom two once more connected with three super poles connected to the vehicle using super wedges. Literally the only reason I did the top row longer than the bottom row is because it looks better when you're shooting in first person. It has no real functionality aside from that. And then just make sure to add some actual ammo. I chose two super ammos because I don't like running out of bullets and you have your advanced turret. So there you have it, you Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts builders, advanced turrets. Get out there and kill some of Gruntilda's minions, experiment with the design yourself and be creative, and most importantly, have fun. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and if you want to see more of them, feel free to like the video and subscribe to Channel Grim and Grin. And of course, as always, until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.